What's happening guys? This is James Blonde with MMOHuts.com. This time we're taking a first look at Yule Gang 2, a martial arts MMORPG from KRG Soft, published by Cubazone. And this particular game is based off a popular Korean comic. It's actually set to take place 30 years after the events in the comics, with the continuation of the Battle of Order and Chaos, which also happens to be the names of the two factions available in the game. And so the game just recently went into open beta for Southeast Asia, but the text of the game has also been translated into English, and there's absolutely no IP block on the game, so anybody can actually get in and check it out. But interesting enough, this is a sequel to Scions of Fate, which you might know as a cartoon-style martial arts MMO from a while back. And it, it's actually promising an action combat system with plenty of other unique features, so I'll definitely be able to get in and show you guys what to expect exactly. So starting out, you have a choice between Order and Chaos. Like I mentioned before, these are the two factions in the game, and the only difference between selecting one over the other is how your late game armor is actually going to end up looking, and the faction versus faction battles that take place later on. Otherwise, you don't have a different starting area, story, stats, or perks by choosing one over the other. They're basically the same thing. And as of right now, you don't have many options for classes yet. In the trailer for the game, we actually see an assassin type class, and uh, there's another one with a scythe, which is what I was kind of hoping to try. But for now, you have the typical class archetypes, the mage, the healer, the archer, and the warrior. And the nice thing is that the classes are not gender specific, which is always good. That, and you're capable of having five separate character slots from the start, you don't have to purchase them or unlock them over time. And seeing that the game is somewhat action combat oriented, I wanted to first start out as the mage, you know, hoping to get a variety of close and ranged attacks. Now I'm assuming that they'll have at least one more class to play as closer to the launch date, and, uh, you know, that'll give you a little bit bigger step into the variety. Now, the character customization, on the other hand, has a decent amount of variety. You're able to change up your character's body shape and proportions. It's a little clunky when, uh, you know, the adjustments are made, but for the most part, it works out. This game actually has pretty decent customization. It's got a boob slider, sort of. After all of that, you're put into a story tutorial, as I like to call them, and the first 12 levels or so of this game is pretty much this tutorial. In some cases, I like this. In this game, I'm glad it was there, but I also had a really easy time figuring out things on my own, as long as they were granted to me. So some of you guys might not like this, but at least you'll know exactly what to expect. It's pretty linear, the whole early game is anyway, and realistically, the story tutorial doesn't take that long to get through, even though it's like 12 levels, like I said. The combat in the game does help you stay with it, and this is actually where you learn how to use your combos in your skills and uh, all of the game's crafting aspects. After that, you're pretty much free to go. And then we have the actual combat. Now, this game seems like a mixture of several different games' combat. It's soft targeting, so you have a reticule, and you essentially mouse over your target to attack. You can toggle through targets with tab, or even lock onto targets with V. And once you've locked on, you can definitely expect your projectiles to go that direction, regardless of which way you're facing. At least with the case of the mage here, you've got close range attacks that can also help you with multiple enemies, seeing that, at least in the early game, the mage doesn't really have any AoE attacks. You'll also notice that it does have a combo system that's a lot like Terra, minus the tied in evasive maneuvers of you know, some of the classes in Terra, but the combos are pre-set up with attack and sub-attack skills, which are E and Q, or right and left click. They're super easy to learn, and your your character yells will help you remember, because you'll hear it over and over and over again. After all, it is a martial arts MMO. You also have your action skills 1 through 0 as you learn them from leveling up, and by the end of the tutorial period, the story tutorial, you'll have two action skills to work with, plus your combos and survivability skills, which are actually very helpful in this game. Like with the mage here, you might have to take on too many enemies at once because you took one step in the wrong direction and you aggro the entire forest because of the small size of the zones in this game. And afterwards, you're about dead. So, with your survivability skills, you can take a moment to meditate your health back. You know, things like that. Now back to the action skills, these also combo, but after trying the mage and the warrior, they're not really anything more than double tapping the button within a certain time frame to make the second attack hit harder than the first. But there's no doubt the action skills hit harder with longer cooldowns, of course. 
And so overall, the controls might take a little bit to get used to. Like I said, you don't have to use Q and E. They're also bound to left and right click, so it really comes down to personal preference. But one thing I wanted to point out is that you've got several options for control setups within the game itself. They're not that different from one another, but I do like the first person option where your view is based off your mouse and you can hide and unhide your cursor with Alt. But then again, there's also a custom option that lets you pretty much set it up how you want. Either way, the game feels nice after you get the hang of the controls and learn some combos along with the movement, which we'll talk about in a minute. Then you can actually get good at it. The part that made the combat in the game so fun is two things. One, the fact that once you're good at the controls, you can literally juggle enemies like you do in Tekken, and it's oddly enough satisfying. The warrior is especially good at this, able to drag multiple enemies to their death. He's really good with multiple enemies like that. His early action skills knock enemies into the air, so that's basically a nice way to start it off. The second part that made the combat fun, as well as an overall cool feature to the game, is the movement. You can press shift and your movement keys to evade whichever direction which you use when you're dodging attacks and you can actually dodge attacks really easily. But you can also take off in a beastly sprint by double tapping W and then take flight by double jumping and break into an air sprint sort of thing. That is really fun, a lot like our kingdom. In fact, as you level you start gaining attacks that you can actually do from the air and I've got to be honest, they look pretty freaking badass. I can imagine these fighting features would actually be really fun in PvP, but then again I may be wrong. After leveling for a little while, I wanted some variety. The quests in the games are a bit boring to be honest, and after trying to get into some PvP, I really didn't get to play a whole lot of that just because there weren't very many players who were involved. There are, however, a couple different types of PvP modes in the game already, all fit for 2 to 12 players at once. Plus, believe it or not, they do have a MOBA style PvP mode with lanes, towers, and minions, so I've got to give them credit for having somewhat unique PvP modes this early on. And with the combat the way it is, and the fun movement in the game, even though I haven't really experienced much of the PvP, you could probably say that this is one of those Asian MMOs that you play for the PvP. But, maybe not. I can't really speak that much for the late game. And while we're talking about things I really didn't get to check out but are still cool and worth mentioning, the game offers a detailed companion system that isn't quite as extensive as Ara Kingdom but still lets you have an offensive partner in battle as well as a mount that looks awesome flying around. Later on when you get a mount, it'll fight for you and you can separately control them like you can the Eidolons in our Kingdom. So that's actually a really cool feature. The graphics in the game are definitely decent. The environments look really nice with a lot of details. It's good if you like the Eastern fantasy setting, of course. But early on at least, the zones seemed really closed in, especially with all of the cool air sprinting stuff that you could do. And I found it odd that the time of day would depend on where you were, it seems. Instead of having a day and night cycle, it would be night and then you would walk through a tunnel and all of a sudden it was daytime. You'd go back through the tunnel and it was nighttime again. It's kind of weird. Overall, I've got to say the game did surprise me with some aspects, and at the same time, it kind of let me down in others. The combat is definitely entertaining, similar to Terra, not as good, but with the combination of the movement system, it keeps you interested in the game, and it's probably even better in PvP, something along the lines of C9 or Rusty Hearts PvP. The downfall is the questing gets really boring, at least early on in the game. Most of the quests are kill quests, and even though the enemies are better than most, and you rarely ever have to kill any more than three of whatever it's asking you to kill, the quests really don't have that much meaning behind them. It's a lot like a simplified version of Age of Wushu, except more linear, which was my thoughts going into the game. But hopefully this will help you guys out and decide uh, whether or not you want to check out the game. I think a lot of players will like it, especially those who like the PvP and actually get a chance to get into it. It's a hefty download though. It's close to 10 gigs and you can either download it in pieces or grab the torrent file, which is actually what I did. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Follow the link in the description below to the Yule Gang 2 game profile at MMOHuts.com for more information about the game and ways to download. But until next time guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there gamers.